In this video, we're going to talk about how to sell software to businesses. Now, this is a very big subject, and we're going to really dive in and go through our recommendations for how to do this step by step. And with that, there's a lot to talk about. So we're actually going to break this out across multiple videos. The strategy, reaching out, gathering information, sales process, generating leads, meetings and presentations, and then we'll wrap up with closing deals. So let's start out by talking about creating a strategy that increases your odds for success. Now, I personally believe that most salespeople use a strategy that's fairly simple that kind of starts with, we have software that we want to sell. So let's talk about our software as much as we can to as many businesses as we can. And that usually looks something like this. We'll send emails and make calls where we say something like this. Hi, this is Michael Halper and I'm with Company X. We sell or we provide product X. This is what it does. This is how much it costs. Do you need what I sell? And I think that this is a very traditional approach that the majority of salespeople use. And I refer to this as product selling. You have a product you want to sell. You go out and you talk about your product as much as you can to as many prospects as you can. Now, that actually sounds like a pretty logical approach. But the problem with that is that when you communicate in this way, you sound like a salesperson that's trying to sell something. And when you're talking to prospects that get sold to a lot, that will trigger more guardedness. Prospects will then give you objections and try to get rid of you. And when you face more objections, you're going to have to deal with more rejection on a daily basis. And when your approach is just to try to sell your product to every prospect that you cross paths with, you're more likely to waste your valuable time because you're trying to sell your product to prospects that likely don't need what you sell. Now, we're here to talk about our strategy for how to sell software to businesses, and I want to propose to you to go about it a different way, almost to go about it the opposite way. And in some ways, what I'm going to share with you is counterintuitive. Your instinct is to talk about your software as much as you can, but I'm actually going to share with you an approach where you talk less about the software that you're trying to sell. And you might end up talking to fewer businesses, not more. And so instead of talking about your company and product, what we recommend you do is focus more on the benefits that your product and company can deliver to the prospects you're talking to and talking about pain points and problems that our product or our service or our company can make go away. And instead of primarily talking about our stuff, we want to talk about the prospects and learn about the prospects that we're engaging with. And the best way to do that is by asking good questions. And then once we learn about our prospects and identify that they need our help and they need the product or service that we sell, we can then introduce our product and our company as a solution to their needs and a solution to their problem. And we can share customer examples as a way to educate the prospect on what it is we do and what we sell and how we can help. And instead of focusing on getting a new customer, our goal in our communications focuses more on just moving the prospect through our sales process. Now, this is our approach. We refer to this more as a consultative selling approach because it's more focused on learning about the prospect, learning about their needs, and then introducing what we sell as a solution to what they need. Now, with this approach, you will decrease how much you sound like a salesperson that's trying to sell something. And you'll sound more like a business person or a consultant. And with that, you'll trigger less guardedness from the prospects that you engage with. And because they'll be less guarded, you'll face fewer objections and less rejection. And because you're learning more about the prospect and only talking to businesses that need the product that you sell and that need your help, the leads that you generate will be higher quality leads. And because you're working higher quality leads, you'll minimize the amount of time you waste talking to poor quality prospects and trying to sell your product to prospects that don't need what you sell. Now, when you compare these two approaches, at first glance, product selling might actually seem easier because you really have to think and plan less about what to say. Because if all you're doing is talking about the product when you send emails and when you make calls, you already have a lot of product knowledge in your head. So it's fairly easy just to go out and talk about the product that you sell. But because of that, and because you look like a salesperson trying to sell something, it's going to be more difficult in terms of facing more objections and more rejection on a daily basis. 
With consultative selling, it could be a little bit more difficult because if you're asking good questions and talking about benefits and looking for pain points, you might actually have to think a little bit ahead of time and plan more about what you're going to say, and that could be a little bit more difficult. But because you are using more of a consultative selling approach and looking less like a salesperson trying to push a product, you'll face fewer objections and rejection on a daily basis, and you'll generate better quality leads and closing will be easier. So overall, once you get your planning and organize what to say, consultative selling will make selling easier and more successful and in many ways more fun. And we actually have a process that makes the thinking and the planning for the consultative selling approach easier. And that process starts with thinking about what is the product that you sell. And I'm going to go through this process step by step. And what you can do is you can follow this same process with the product and software that you sell. And so the product that I'm going to use is a fictional product that I created for inventory management software. And so when you're thinking about what you sell, let's try to brainstorm some of the details of what it includes in terms of features. So our inventory management software provides it includes an auto inventory replenishment feature, predictive demand forecasting, and a management dashboard. Then I recommend you go on to think about how is the software that I sell different from the competition? So our software is able to be set up without any professional services, easy to use, and there's a lower management and maintenance cost with our product compared to the competition. The next step in the process is to stop and think about who are we going after? Who are we trying to meet with? Who are we going to be communicating with with this sales message? And so if we think about some of the different people that we can talk to to try to sell our product, you might want to think about going after different industries. Maybe we can sell our software to different verticals, manufacturers, hospitals, banks, government institutions. You might want to think about the different size of organizations that we sell our software to small businesses or large global organizations. The size of the organization could impact your strategy and could impact what you say and ask. You can likely sell your software to different departments in a business. Yes, you sell software, and most likely you can and should sell your software to IT, but you could probably also sell your software to other departments in the organization like finance or HR or marketing. And inside the departments that you're selling to are many different titles and many different levels. So what level of the organization are we going to be trying to meet with and sell to? All of these characteristics could impact our strategy and what could have a direct impact on what you say and ask with your sales message. And you could create a different sales message for the different departments or the different levels in the organization or the different industries. Now, if you're just getting started, I'm a firm believer in crawl, walk, run. So before trying to create different sales messages for all these different scenarios, a good first step is just to create one sales message that we could use for everybody. And to do that, you can use a broad target audience like businesses or individuals or people. And this allows you to create one sales message and one set of talking points that you could use for everybody. And if you do use that, then you could come back later when it's time to walk or run and create a second sales message that targets a particular industry or create a sales message that targets the C-level. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to select the target audience of manufacturing the next step in the process is to think about the value that we have to offer. And in most cases, I try to keep things simple here, and I recommend to just think of three to six different improvements that your product can help deliver for the target audience. But since we're talking about how to sell software to businesses, which can be very challenging and very competitive, I'm going to actually make a recommendation to get a little bit more advanced here. So instead of just thinking generally about improvements that you can make, we can divide the improvements that we deliver into three different categories. So at the lowest level, we can deliver technical value. And this is how our software can help to improve the processes or systems or people on the prospect side. For example, we might be able to automate manual tasks, make something work better, make something easier, improve the access to information or visibility. And when our software delivers technical improvements, that will usually work its way up to create business improvements, such as decreasing costs, increasing the income or revenue for the business. And when our software helps to create business improvements and technical improvements, we can often create 
personal improvements for the prospect that we're actually selling to. So if we're working with the CIO or the VP of technology, when they purchase our software for their organization and it creates all these technical and business improvements, we can often help that VP of IT to have personal improvements, like help them to increase their personal income from bonuses or career advancement or decrease their workload and improve their work-life balance. And by going this extra step of breaking the value that we deliver into these three categories, it can help with selling software in a couple different ways. First of all, getting this detailed helps us to make sure we're not missing something. Because when we're talking about software, it can be easy to primarily talk about and think about technical improvements because software can be a fairly technical product. And you can forget to think about and talk about business improvements. So this process here will help you to make sure you don't leave out any business improvements or leave out some personal improvements that you can share with the prospect. This process of also separating out your value can help you to tailor your message. So if you're implementing a strategy where you're selling your software to upper level management, you can focus your messaging more on business value. And if you shift to talking lower in the organization to frontline managers, you can focus more on the technical value. So first of all, if we start with thinking about technical improvements, what we can do is we can bring back the features and the differentiation that we just brainstormed. We want to keep in mind the target audience for the sales message that we're creating. And what we can do is we can look at our features and our differentiation and think about, do any of these help to make something work better, help to make something easier, decrease the time it takes to do something, improve visibility and access to information. And we can look at these one at a time. And if any of these do help in those areas, then we can start to compose a few thoughts as to how it does that. So our inventory management can help to decrease time spent ordering, increase ordering accuracy, and improve visibility to real-time information. And once we have that, we can then brainstorm business improvements that we can deliver. And what we can do is we can bring back Back the technical improvements that we just came up with and still keeping in mind manufacturers and we can think about do any of these technical improvements help to increase revenue or income or decrease costs or expenses or decrease risk improve the customer's product and we can look at these one at a time and each of these can often lead to a business improvement such as decreasing staffing and labor costs decrease inventory costs and improve decision making and we can use our technical improvements and our business improvements to think of personal improvements to identify that when we deliver these technical and business improvements, we can help to improve work-life balance, increase recognition and compensation, and improve career trajectory. And once we have that, we can move to the next step of the process, which is brainstorming the pain points that we can help make go away for our target audience. And my typical recommendation here is to try to think of three to six pain points and challenges that your product or service can make go away. But again, since we're talking about selling software to businesses, my recommendation is to break the pain that we can help to solve into three different levels, such as technical pain, which is pain that's felt in the area of processes, systems, or people. And when the business that you sell to are experiencing technical pain that can often lead to business pain such as lower revenue, higher cost, impacted delivery of services. And the prospect that you're selling to, if their organization is feeling technical and business pain, that can often impact the prospect that you're selling to in the area of income and career and work environment. And if we break the pain that we can help solve into these three levels, again, we can make sure we're not missing any pain points that we should be talking about with our prospects. And we can also tailor some of our messaging depending on who we're talking to in the organization. So if we start out think, trying to think about any technical pain that we can solve with our software, what we can do is bring back the technical improvements that we just came up with because each of these improvements usually has an opposite pain point that it helps to solve. So what we can do is we can ask ourselves, what is the opposite of this improvement or what problem goes away when we create this improvement? So looking at each of these improvements one at a time, we can come up with these pain points. And then if we move on to try to think about some business pain that we can make go away, we can bring back the business improvements that we came up with and go through the same process to come up with a list of business pain points that we can make go away. And when we move on to personal pain points, we can go through that same process and use those personal improvements to think of personal pain points that we can make go away for the person that we're trying to sell to. And the next step of the process is to think about good questions to ask. 
I personally believe the best salesperson is the one that asks the best questions and you can agree with that but still not know what questions to ask. But what I'm going to show you here is a process you can use to create an optimum list of questions to ask and always have good questions to ask. And it starts with creating what I refer to as pain questions. If we just came up with a great set of pain points that we can help to solve, there's a question that we could ask for each of these pain points to see if the prospect has that pain or has that concern. So what we can do is we can look at these one at a time and ask ourselves, what question could we ask to see if the prospect has that challenge or concern? And by going through these one at a time, we can come up with an optimum set of pain questions to ask our prospect. There's another category of questions that I recommend you ask, which I refer to as current state questions. These are questions that try to identify what is the prospect doing in the area where you have something to sell. So if you sold cars, you should ask current state questions of, do you have a car today? What are you driving? What year is it? How many miles does it have? Do you own it? Do you lease it? So these questions will be unique for depending on the product that you sell. And I can't tell you exactly what current state questions you should ask, but I can provide a list of areas that you might want to think about asking about. So certainly you should ask a current state question to see if a prospect currently has what you sell, who they're working with, gather details about current systems or processes, learn about people in the organization, learn about current contracts or expiration dates, any sizing details, current performance, maybe the last time they looked at purchasing something similar to what you sell. And with that list, we can come up with these current state questions for selling inventory management software. The next step in the process is to think about a customer example that we can share when we're talking with prospects. And here's a four-step process that you can go through to create a very concise, tight customer example for the product that you sell. You might want to think of a customer that you helped or sold your product to that's similar to the target buyer type. Maybe think of a problem they had before they started working with you. What did you sell them to solve that problem? And then try to think of two improvements that your product or service helped to create for that customer. And so going through those four steps, we I can come up with this customer example here for selling inventory management software to other manufacturers. Now going through that step-by-step -step process, each step creates what we would refer to as building blocks. And you can use those building blocks to create a cold call script. We can use those same building blocks to create an appointment script. We can use those building blocks to create a cold email campaign. We can use those building blocks to create voicemail messages. We can use those building blocks to create objection responses. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of different documents that we can create with all of those different building blocks. And I don't want to take time in this video to show you what all of those different documents look like for a couple reasons. First of all, it would make this video extremely long. And second of all, I've already done that in another video. If you want to see a lot of the different combinations that you can create with those building blocks and your sales message, if you go through that process, all you have to do is go to this playlist on our YouTube channel, The Smart Sales System, Sell Smarter, Not Harder. And then video four is titled Writing Sales Scripts. This video, we basically show you how to mix and match all those building blocks to create a lot of different documents. So I'll include a link to that in the description below. Now, while you can use that other YouTube video to create all of your different documents, if you want to save yourself a lot of time, all of those documents and more are actually found in the Sales Scripter software. We have this feature here called the Sales Playbook, which is a library of documents. These documents all mix and match those building blocks to create all of these different scripts and email messages, voicemail scripts. And there's an area here called the sales message builder, which takes you through that process that I just showed you here, that step-by-step -step process of, of brainstorming the product that you sell. And then who are you going after? How do you help? problems you can help to solve and questions you should ask. All of these steps are here in the software and the software takes you through that process step by step and it makes creating your sales message much easier. So that's pretty much it for this first video of building your strategy for how to sell software to businesses. In the next video, we're, we're going to talk about finding prospects and reaching out. So we look forward to seeing you on the next video. If you have questions or you want more information, the best place to go is salescriptor.com. Thanks for being here. And again, we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.